Welcome back to Morning Dew. I hope this has been a source of encouragement and inspiration to you thus far. Recently, I've been meditating a lot on the Kingdom of God, and I'm really looking at ways for you and I to apply the values, the truth, the purposes of the Kingdom in our daily lives. You know, Jesus has made us stewards of His Word, of His presence, and of His ways. And these three things, for me, constitute the Kingdom of God. Now Moses was someone who knew the ways of God, whereas the people of God were only acquainted with His works. I would like us to start a series on the Kingdom that reveals the ways of the King, because as we can pray as Moses prayed in Exodus 33:13, Lord, show me your ways that I may know you. So let's get to know the King. Because when Jesus taught about the kingdom, he also personified it. Let's look at one of the parables, he said. In Matthew 13, 31 to 32, he said this, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed that a man took and sowed in his field. It's the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it's larger than all the garden plants, and it becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. And Luke's Gospel says the same thing in Luke chapter 13, verses 18 to 19. So here we see how Jesus uses metaphors to communicate the truth of His kingdom. And in doing so, He's actually revealing what kind of king He really is. What did Jesus explain to us in this parable? Well, first of all, He already saw the fullness of the plant in the seed. That's how God sees things. We consider something to be in embryonic form, and we also see that we only see the smallness. But when God looks at something, He sees the fullness, the accomplishment of that seed or that word or that promise or that truth. In other words, God sees the fullness of the miracle in the seed form. One example I think of is when he received the fish and the bread, the loaves of bread, from the little boy. He already saw the miracle of the multitudes being fed. So, as we consider the seeds of the kingdom that God has given to us to sow, we can also discover that the smallest of words or gestures or interventions can be planted in the hearts and lives of people and grow to such an extent that the kingdom is manifested. You know, this was even true historically when you think about it, because the kingdom of God had these inconspicuous beginnings which eventually developed to include all the birds of the air, all the nations of the world in other terms. So this speaks not just of the kingdom meant for individual souls, but the parable tells us that the branches were able to welcome birds who built their nests, welcome individuals and their families. That's what a nest is for, is to reproduce. So what we see in this principle of the seed being sown is that the kingdom takes root then it begins to flourish and develop and grow until it becomes a place or an atmosphere or a, a context that can welcome everyone, every nation, every individual, and every family. That's why the seed principle is so important. Luke, to come back to his gospel, he was one of the first disciples to taste of this inclusive spirit of the Kingdom of God because he was a non-Jew and he became one of Jesus' closest disciples among all the other Jews. That gives us a hint that Jesus is not just interested in his own people but in the nations of the world. And finally, Jesus himself was that seed. One man buried in the ground for three days until he overcame sin and death through the power of the resurrection to bring the kingdom to every man, to all of humanity. He started as one, he began to work through 12 disciples, and then he brought his kingdom to the nations. So God is challenging us to see the full power and potential 
of that one seed, that one life laid down, that one word that is sown in the appropriate circumstances, that one gesture that manifests the love of the King and the values of the kingdom. This week, let me challenge you. Be intentional, be proactive about sowing that little mustard seed in fertile soil where it can develop and grow and flourish and become a manifestation of God's kingdom in and through your life. Let me know if this speaks to you as well. Feel free to share your comments with me and I'll see you next week.